All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Boris, and my, I'm at the Ecology Design Studio, and this is part two to our Stata tutorials. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking um, a research uh, paper that I wrote, Energy Security and Diversity, and I'm going to show you how I use Stata to design the models, the indices, and run the regressions. So this is part two, and we're going to talk about um, Ordinary release squares, robust estimates, uh, Cochrane or cut and Poisson distributions, new west estimates, lagged variables, heteroscedasticity, VIF, uh, value inflation factors, multicollinearity, uh, the Durbin Watson statistic and the Durbin Watson alternate statistic, um, information criteria, R squared, and F statistics. So let's jump right in. We, we've already ran our model as per part one to this uh, tutorial series. And now I'm just going to type in VIF. It's that simple. And uh, we have no multicollinearity. The value we're comparing this to is 10. And our average VIF or mean VIF is 7.05. Uh, the only one that might cause some problems is total renewables, which is 10.45. But that's, you know, that's right on the border there, so it's perfectly fine. Uh, it's definitely not as bad as some of the other models that I've ran. You can find that on the main research paper or ecologydesigns.com slash feed where we have a mean VIF of over 40 or 43. Uh, so let's check our heteroscedasticity. We type in het test. Uh, okay, it looks good. Uh, we can reject our null hypothesis that there is constant variance, so we have no heteroscedasticity. Uh, probability is 0.36. Uh, if this was um, anywhere within the statistical significance levels of 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01, We'd have something to worry about, but this this looks good. Next one is we type in E stat D Watson. And this is our Durbin Watson statistic. Um, and it's at 0.2576. That is not good. And let's see why. Take a look at the graph that's popping up on your window. Uh, we have several re uh, regions here. We have our rejection regions, uncertainty zones, and fail to reject um, regions. So we have lower and upper D statistic boundaries, uh, which are defined by the number of variables and by probabilities, by, basically by row. Uh, and we have several properties of the Durbin Watson statistic. It varies from 0 to 4, and if row is 0, then our uh, statistics should be 2. That's the failure to reject or null hypothesis. Basically, we have autocorrelation. Uh, if the D statistic is greater than two, we have negative autocorrelation. And if it's less than two, we have positive autocorrelation. And we have a very low uh, D statistic here at 0.25. So we have positive autocorrelation. And there is a way to correct for that with a new US regression. Let's do a quick uh, E stat. Um, Durbin out, I believe it is. Yeah, the alternate Durbin Watson. Yep, yeah, there it is. Uh, Durbin's alternate test for autocorrelation. Uh, st statistically significant at 0.01 level, uh, very high. Uh, and we can't reject our null hypothesis here, so we do have serial correlation. And the way we can fix this is with a new US regression. And I'm going to press page up until I pull up my regression here. Uh, click the home tab to go forward and delete this and type in new -y. Go all the way to the end, type in comma, lag, three. And I think that should be sufficient. There it is. So now that we've ran a new US regression with different standard errors, we can see how the standard errors here have changed, how the coefficients have changed, and which ones are no longer statistically significant, and by how much. Uh, and we can't run, if we try to run the Durbin, let's try East at the Watson. It's going to give us an error, right. We can't run it. The same thing happens if, let's go up a little bit and do comma robust. Uh, oh, I already was a robust regression. Let's delete that. All right, so this is a robust uh, ordinary least squares regression. Uh, as you can see, tighter standard error co uh, coefficients, um, lower T values. Uh, some values become statistically insignificant as compared to a regular OOS. Uh, and we also can't run a uh, any of the any of the tests. We can't run the Stati Watson or the alternate test. Uh, 
we also can't use the r squared right this becomes meaningless when we're talking about r squared we can't say that 80 percent of our variation uh, can be explained by this model uh, it's basically our pseudo r squared and a new west regression uh, we can point to it and say, you know, look, it's high, but we can't use it for anything. We can just look at, look at it for a goodness of fit for a model. So let's go back to our regular OS regression and run that once again so we can work with it. And I want to show you the information criterion, and we just type in ESTAT IC. Right, and we have large negative values for both our AIC and BIC. Now, AIC and BIC, that's Akaike information criterion and the Schwartz information criterion, respectively. And we don't want to see large negative or positive values here. We want small information criterion because we can think of that as the amount of information lost from our model or a measure of entropy, if you will. So the higher the values, uh, the more entropy and information loss we have in our model. This is not as bad. Uh, I've seen some models, some of my models that I've had are negative 300 or positive 400. And we want this to be as small of a number as possible. Now we've ran all the tests. We've ran VIF, head test, Durbin Watson statistics, uh, and information criterion. And what we've come to realize is, or what I see from this model, is that it is not correctly specified. There's something missing. And take a look at the dependent variable the logarithm of total fossil fuels. I don't think it should be like that. Uh, in the model, in the main paper, it's uh, you'll notice that it's uh, total uh, energy produced in the United States, not total um, fossil fuel produced. And the reason for that is because we want uh, to have causation between our variables. Let's think about this model in just purely theoretical terms for a second and forget about stata. We are regressing total fossil fuels on U.S. population and total renewables. That is not, there's no causation between total renewables and fossil fuels or between U.S. population and fossil, there may be some between U.S. population and total fossil fuels, but we want a model that examines total energy produced in the United States uh, in terms of fossil fuels, in terms of U.S. population, and in terms of renewables. So we're actually missing a variable. We have omitted a variable, and not an explanatory variable. We've actually omitted a, uh, our dependent variable, the most important thing. So let's go ahead and add that and see how that changes our model. And we want an, uh, a logarithmic form of total energy produced in the United States. And let's find that real quick, and it's right here and let's press enter and wow look at the difference it, it's it's incredible uh, f statistic is 11,000 the probability is uh, zero very high uh, r squared is 0.999 so almost a hundred percent adjusted r squared again 0.9989 uh, so on average for this model we can say we can explain about 99% of variation observed in our variables. Uh, very highly statistically significant. Uh, look at our t values here. The that's the, basically the coefficients if we were to write out the equation and use it for prediction. We don't really care about the coefficients yet. We're not um, interpreting what those mean. Uh, let's take a look at our t values. This is what I'm looking at here. Um, right here. The only one that's not significant still is the embargo dummy. Everything else, however, is statistically significant at alpha 0 0.01, so highly statistically significant. Take a look at the standard errors, uh, 0 0.0118, you know, whatever. Uh, and you can think of that, you know, as, as plus or minus. Um, and look at the confidence interval. If the confidence interval passes through zero, you know, it's garbage. Uh, so for this one, uh, very close to zero, almost indistinguishable. But this here, you know, 0 0.79 to 0 0.8. If this was negative 0 0.79 to positive 0.83, this p-value here would be very high, probably like 0.34 or 0.57, something like that. Um, so yeah, this is this is the model we've been looking for. Uh, the model we had previously was incorrectly specified. And this is what Stata helps you do. It, through running different tests for quality uh, or misspecification and just thinking about the theoretical assumptions behind a model we can find out you know if we're missing anything or uh, how we want to structure our analysis 
So for example, we're trying to define fossil fuel production in terms of renewables and population. And we realize that that's not necessarily going to give us the results we want. And maybe we want to look at total energy produced in the United States uh, as defined by fossil fuels, renewables, and U.S. population with some categorical variables mixed in to show us, for example, you know, if renewables matter or if the OPEC embargo had a significant impact. And what we want to do now is, again, run our test. Let's do VIF. Uh, 7.69 uh, is less than 10. Not bad. Head test. Um, not bad. Again, 0.7. Probability is very um low it's it's hard thinking about this huh, for me because you see 0.75 you want to say ah oh, probability is very high it's actually very low because uh, probability a high probability will be 0 0.01 or 0.1 or 0 0.05 those are the, the significance the usual significance levels used uh, so we can reject h0 we can reject our null hypothesis um, we don't have constant variance we have non-constant variance uh, let's do e stat d watson uh, getting closer to two, definitely not. We have some autocorrelation. Uh, definitely better than 0.25. Let's do Estat, uh, Durbin, Alt, the alternate test. Um, not that good. Probability is within the statistically significant levels. Let's do Estat IC. Uh, and wow, we went from negative 100 something to negative 426. So this is telling us that while this model is good because we've included all the relevant variables uh, maybe we're not using the appropriate regression model maybe ordinary least squares is not the one we want so let's press up a little bit until we get to it let's type in comma robust it changes it a little bit the embargo that was 0 0.018 now it's 0 0.21 uh, you know your confidence intervals are going to be tighter uh, R squared may be a little lower. Uh, again, we don't use R squared. We, we could just look at it and go, you know, okay, it's still high, but we can't use it for statistical analysis now that we've done this. Uh, and let's try New West. New West basically corrects for order correlation. That's because as the time between air term increases, the correlation between the air term decreases, and the New West estimator can be used to improve OS regressions when variables have heteroscedasticity or correlation. And while we don't have uh, heteroscedasticity in this model, we do have autocorrelation. Uh, and this occurs in time series data, so we have to keep a critical eye out for that. Let's do a, let's now do a new US regression now that we know what it is. Um, let's delete the robust here. Uh, type in comma lag three, and all that does is it lags it uh, for three time periods. New E. And we see some variables are becoming statistically insignificant. Our, uh, basically, our two offending variables are environmental dummy and our embargo dummy. Uh, this one is now 0 0.80 instead of 0 0.18 or 0 0.21 as previously, and now this one's 0 0.017. Uh, the rest still look good. Everything still looks good. Our F statistic, remember, in our um, regular OOS was around 11,000. Now it's 4,000. That number doesn't really mean anything. It, it, the higher it is, the better. Uh, but, you know, we can't compare the two models right now as they are. And as per the previous, ver uh, previous um, part, part one of this tutorial, we can't do, if we try to do, you know, um, Estad, D, Watson, we can't do that now that we've done new west uh, but we do know that the way this model has been calculated ha has addressed our autocorrelatory issues and in part three we're going to see um, how we can do advanced output how we can run several models and then output those models and say for example a word document in a table and um, just, just like in a, in a statistical publication and i'm going to show you how to do that um, there's a package you have to download and then um, you have to save the models in here. Uh, it's not a bad process and one, once you get it down, it's definitely very helpful. It saves you some time. So join me in part three. Uh, thank you for watching part two and I'll see you in a little bit.